The movie is set in the Spanish town of Toledo. Within the town, there's a gated path leading to an estate called El Cigarral. Inside the estate, in a room equipped with a camera, a woman named Vera practices yoga in a skin-tight suit shortly after she gets busy modeling her plaster sculptures. In the other part of the estate, the estate's chief maid, Marilia, mixes a drug in the orange juice she prepares for Vera and sends the breakfast, change of clothes, and other items to her using the dumb waiter. Meanwhile, plastic surgeon Robert Ludgard, the estate's owner, returns after delivering a lecture. Before stepping into his house, he goes to his clinic and secures the blood bag he received in a special delivery he picked up on his way back. Robert's house displays many paintings of humans in their most natural form, specifically women, depicting his love for the female anatomy, which is why he has kept Vera captive and keeps a constant watch on her. That day too, he sees her sleeping, and after admiring her soft curves in a totally not creepy manner, he goes to meet her in her room with some opium, but finds that she has slit her wrists using paper from a magazine and lies unconscious. Robert sweeps her in his arms and takes her to the operation table in his clinic. He cleans her wounds and admits that he didn't realize her skin was so soft that it would cut so easily from the paper. However, Vera is unhappy and asks him to end her life, but Robert dismisses her. For several days, he has been experimenting with cultivating artificial skin that is resistant to burns and insect bites. Finally, when he is successful, he names it Gal, which is the name of his deceased wife who was burned to death in a car accident. He soon presents his results in a medical symposium and lies about rigorously testing it on athymic mice. However, in the after party, he privately discloses that he conducted transgenesis on humans, which is illegal. As a result, he is forbidden to continue with his research with a warning that if he does, he will be reported to the scientific community. That evening, Robert comes back home and tries to placate himself by spending some time with Vera, but when she tries to seduce him into letting her live with him in the house as a normal couple, rather than as his captive guinea pig, he quickly walks out of the room. The next day at breakfast, Marilia asks Robert what he plans to do with Vera and suggests he should get rid of her. She also mentions Vera's appearance, insinuating that Robert has done something more than just use her for cultivating artificial skin. Robert asks her to fire all the servants before leaving. After Robert and the servants are gone, Marilia's estranged son, Zeka, arrives at the estate. Marilia lets him in and serves him food after he tells her he's hungry. She soon finds out that Zeka has committed a robbery after seeing his face displayed all over the news. Marilia asks him to leave immediately, but hearing that Robert is out of Spain for a few days, he makes himself comfortable. Just as he's looking for something to drink, he sees Vera on one of the screens. Marilia threatens him with a gun, but he subdues her and after tying her, searches for Vera. And when he finally finds her, he admits leaving her in the burning car to die. Vera plays along and learns that Robert saved the woman Zeka is talking about. Zeka proceeds to have his way with her, but Robert arrives home a bit early, and upon witnessing what is going on or what already happened, he shoots Zeka in the ass for some reason, then in the back, killing him. As Marilia cleans Vera's room, she talks to Vera and reveals that Zeka and Robert are brothers, and she is their mother. She had Zeka after she had an affair with a servant, while Robert is the son of Mr. Ledgard. Marilia served in the Ledgard estate from a very young age. Mrs. Ledgard couldn't bear children, so when Robert was born, the couple adopted him. Marilia burns the blood-soaked bedsheets and tells Vera that Zeka mistook her for Gal, Robert's late wife. Zeka had run off at a young age and got involved in transporting drugs. About 12 years ago, Zeka returned to the house seeking shelter from the police after a robbery. Marilia hid him in an outhouse, but Gal found him, and soon, their love blossomed. They soon ran away together, but their car crashed and caught fire. 
Zeka survived and ran away, but by the time Robert found Gal, she was horribly burned and had just a flicker of life left. Robert saved her from the brink of death. He worked many sleepless nights nursing Gal back to health. He ensured she never looked at her reflection, so he took out all the mirrors from the house and kept the windows draped. Gal's health was finally improving, and soon she could stand on her own. One day, Gal heard her daughter Norma singing a song she had taught her. Gal felt a rush of emotions and wanted to see her daughter. She made her way to the window, removed the drapes, and opened the window when she caught a glimpse of herself in the reflection. She let out a blood-curdling scream that echoed all around the house because she was so horrified. She jumped out the window, ending her life. Norma saw what happened, and the incident deeply impacted her mental health. In the present, Robert returns after burying Zeka's body and spends the night with Vera. However, Vera asks him to wait as her love pudding was in the oven too long earlier. Robert complies and wraps his arms around her securely and lets her sleep. That night, Robert dreams of the wedding party he attended six years ago. Robert is happy to see Norma make progress in socializing. When it is time to leave, Robert searches for Norma, who is nowhere to be found. He goes outside to check if she is out with her friends and finds an orgy in the woods instead. Suddenly, a bike rides past him and he decides to look in the direction the bike came from, where he finds Norma, lying unconscious. Norma has a nervous breakdown when he tries to wake her up, and she starts yelling upon gaining consciousness. After that, Norma is committed to a psychiatric institution because the incident led to Norma developing a fear of men, which eventually pushes her to the brink of insanity, and in the end, she also takes her own life. Vera, too, has a dream about the same incident. She sees a young man named Vicente, who works in his mother's dress shop. He and his friends get high on drugs and crash a wedding party where he meets Norma. The friends go out in the garden and leave Norma and Vicente alone. They walk in the garden and as they do, Vicente thinks Norma is also high as she recounts a list of psychiatric medications she takes every day. All of a sudden, she trips and her heel breaks. Norma takes off her shoes and hurls them in disgust as she hates wearing them. She also removes her jacket and says she would always be naked if she could. This excites Vicente and he starts kissing her. They lie under a tree and Vicente lies above her, making his move when suddenly, Norma starts screaming. A familiar song from the party triggers Norma, which is why she has such a frantic reaction, as it is the same song she was singing when her mother took her life. When Vicente tries to stop her from screaming by covering her mouth with his hand, she bites him. Vicente slaps her to free himself, which renders Norma unconscious. He quickly pulls up his pants and fixes Norma's dress before fleeing on his motorbike, which Robert notices. One evening, when Vicente is out riding his motorbike, Robert disguises himself as Steven Seagal and chases him in his minivan. Once they're in an isolated place, Robert knocks Vicente off his motorbike by slamming his van against him and kidnaps him after injecting Vicente with a sedative. Vicente wakes up chained and calls for help, but to no avail. After Vicente doesn't return home, his mother goes to the police station to report his disappearance. After a few days, they call her in and tell her that her son's motorbike was retrieved at the bottom of the cliff and suspect the sea must have swept him away. However, his mother refuses to believe Vicente is dead because they haven't found his body yet. Robert keeps Vicente chained in his basement for several days before cleaning him with a water hose and shifting him near the table where he provides Vicente with books. Robert gradually begins the process of transforming Vicente into a girl, first by performing a vaginoplasty in which he asks his colleagues for help and lies about Vicente agreeing to do it. After the surgery has been successful, Robert shifts Vicente to a well-lit room in his estate, and to help him keep the new orifice open, he gives him dilators. Not dildos, dilators. 
shaped like dildos. Over the course of six years, Robert performs breast and butt implants, plastic surgery, and voice feminization surgery on Vicente and transforms him into Vera, a replica of his late wife, Gal. During this time, Vicente struggles to keep himself sane and aware of his identity as he loses track of time and the world around him. After the transformation, Vera refuses to accept herself but soon finds respite in yoga. In the meantime, Marilia returns to the estate after an absence of four years and helps Robert take care of Vera. In the present, Marilia is upset at Robert and Vera's growing closeness. She doesn't trust Vera, but Robert trusts her enough to give her the freedom to stay in the house as a couple. The next day, he sends Vera with Marilia shopping for the first time and is visited by his colleague Fulgencio, who was part of the team that operated upon Vicente. He is there to talk about it after recognizing Vicente from a new story about him missing. Robert lies that Vicente is in America working in the adult film industry. However, Fulgencio doesn't believe him as the news article says Vicente's mother is still searching desperately for him. He further accuses Robert of kidnapping Vicente and experimenting on him and tries to blackmail him for his game. Robert pulls out the gun from his drawer and threatens Fulgencio to leave. Vera, who is back by then, overhears their conversation and enters the room. She tells Fulgencio that she came here of her own free will and her name is not Vicente, but Vera Cruz, and she was always a woman. However, when she sees her old picture in the newspaper, she gets anxious. That night, while Robert and Vera are making love, Vera is still sore from what Zeka did to her. She remembers she has bought a lubricating cream and checks her bags, but when she can't seem to find it, she remembers putting it in her purse, which she left in Robert's study. She goes to fetch her purse, grabs Robert's gun from his drawer, and hides it in her purse. She looks at her old picture and holds back her tears as she remembers her life before the hell she went through in the estate. She returns to the room and shoots Robert dead. Hearing the gunshot alerts Marilia, who cautiously makes her way into Robert's bedroom, holding her pistol. Upon entering the room, she sees Robert lying dead, and as she calls out to Vera to show herself, Vera, who has been hiding under the bed, no-scopes Marilia. As Marilia takes her last breath, she says, I knew it. Finally free from her captivity after six long years, Vera quickly dresses up and walks out of the estate. The following day, she reaches her mother's store and walks in. She has tears in her eyes as she sees familiar faces of her mother and Christina, her lesbian friend and colleague whom she loved six years ago. Since Vera's mother doesn't recognize her, she sends Christina to attend to her. Vera tells Christina about her kidnapping and that she was forced to change her sex. She also mentions that she had to kill two people to escape captivity and asks Christina to help her. To convince Christina she is Vicente, Vera recalls her last day's memories with Christina before Vicente disappeared. Christina looks shocked and tries to hold back her tears. Just then, the mother walks in, and with tears in her eyes, Vera says, I'm Vicente. And that's a wrap for this movie recap. Thanks for watching.